Hello, my name is Thomas Wang. I'm the director of the Division of Cardiovascular Medicine and the physician in chief of the Vanderbilt Heart and Vascular Institute. I'm a cardiologist and I'm also a clinical investigator. Two of my main areas of research interest are the interaction of cardiovascular disease and abnormal metabolism and the identification of new biomarkers of cardiovascular disease. These interests relate directly to the study of obesity. One of the questions my colleagues and I are particularly interested in is how does obesity lead to heart disease? This is critically important because heart disease is a leading cause of death in obese individuals. Understanding how obesity leads to heart disease can lead to more effective strategies to preventing heart disease in obese individuals. Clearly, weight loss is one effective way of reducing the adverse effects of obesity, but sustaining effective weight loss over long periods of time can be extremely challenging. Thus, we need strategies to combat the adverse cardiovascular consequences of obesity. My colleagues and I are particularly interested in the nitrate peptide system. The nitrate peptides are hormones produced by the heart. They have a variety of beneficial effects, including helping the body excrete salt, dilate blood vessels, and reduce cardiac hypertrophy. One of our findings is that obese individuals have an impaired nitrated peptide production. In other words, obese individuals have a nitrated peptide deficiency. We hypothesize that this deficiency may make obese individuals more vulnerable to salt retention, high blood pressure, and cardiac hypertrophy. And our ongoing studies are looking at the potential beneficial effects of stimulating the nitrated peptide system in obese individuals with a nitrated peptide deficiency. On the last slide, I asked, how does obesity lead to heart disease? A corollary of that question is, why do some people with obesity get heart disease while others do not? We look at that question using a variety of approaches, including the measurement of cardiovascular biomarkers. That question itself is really part of a broader question. What accounts for the phenotypic heterogeneity in obesity? In other words, instead of heart disease, you could ask, why do some obese people get diabetes while others do not? Why do some people with obesity get high blood pressure while others do not? We now know that obesity is not a homogenous entity. Rather, people with similar degrees of obesity may have very different susceptibility to getting disease. Understanding what determines these differences and being able to characterize these differences in a clinical context can lead to much more effective strategies to treat people with obesity. Thank you.